Our guest today is a boss in every way. I mean, from decades of leadership as an executive across public and private sectors to accelerating the growth of the WNBA as a former president. Now, she has a new podcast called Enlighten, where she highlights stories of inspiration and overcoming adversity. But check it out wherever you get your podcast. I highly recommend Lisa Borders. Welcome to Take Line. Oh, so great to be here, Renee. What's good? What's good? What's good? What's <laughs> up? This is so awesome. Me and Jason, we're excited to have you. So I'm just going to I just want to start even just in the beginning because we just had an awesome WNBA draft for this upcoming season. And you could just tell that there was, there's momentum and it's growing and it's the league's 25th anniversary. So I wanted to ask you because you helped build this legacy and what was some of the changes? Like while you were a, a president, what were some of the things that you were proud to have accomplished while you were there? You know what, Renee, the W is such a special league and you obviously were part of it. We met when you were playing in Minnesota. You were yeah. balling, <laughs> balling all the time. But listen, you and your sisters in the league just made me so proud all the time. The way you stood up, not only for your teammates, but for your community mates. So I walked into an environment where you guys were already rolling, but I don't think you understood just how much you were rolling. So one of the things I'm really super proud of is how in 2016, when things got a little out of control in the community, y'all like stepped up and said, hold up, wait a minute, it's not going down like this. So it wasn't that basketball is all you do. That's what you did professionally, but that wasn't who you were. Your lives had more dimensions to it. So I'm super proud of the legacy that I walked into, the way you all were carrying that torch. And today that is still happening in the W. Wait, now on the business side, let me answer yeah. that question. Let, let's let's get some business side of oh, things going. <laughs> the the league, if you recall, in 2016 when I stepped in, was actually not doing that well as a business. So attendance had sort of flatlined and it was spiraling down. We didn't really have new partners that we could count on. There were folks like ESPN who had been at the table from the beginning, but we didn't have any other distribution channels. We didn't have a lot of support from what I would call corporate America. And then several of the teams were in their markets that they'd always been in, but people were like a little shaky, like we're not sure we gonna stick with it, right? Definitely, so I remember that time. It was, it was an interesting time for any business when you're trying to grow the business, scale it, make sure that people are embracing it. So let me take you to one team. If you remember San Antonio, we moved that team from San Antonio to Las Vegas. And I count that as one of our greatest accomplishments. Number one, we saved 12 women's jobs. Mm. Can somebody say amen? Let's amen. Just amen. Okay, let's get it. <laughs> let's just start there. But hey, Las Vegas was becoming a sports town and the W was a big set of points to, to put up on the board. But let's talk about the, the streaming contract we did with Twitter or the new mm, deal yeah. that was done with FanDuel or NBA Live. All that happened, the merchandise numbers were going through the roof by the time I left. So that was thanks to the work that y'all did on the court. I just had the biggest megaphone serving as <laughs> standing out on the street corner telling everybody, let's look at what's happening at the W. Yeah. The W is, has really been at the forefront of conversations around social justice, uh, voting rights, et cetera. Um, you just talked about um, the business evolution of the league. How do you marry, how did you see those two things evolving together? How did you marry those two kind of, uh, it, it, those two forces together to, to get, to help grow the league to where it is at, at its current state? Yeah, Jason, that's a great question. So let me start with the league was 20 years old when I came in in 2016. It's 25 years old to set to during this season, right? So 25 years is actually a generation. So it was shy of a generation at 20. 20 is a really long time to quote unquote be in business. 25 mm -hmm. is even better. So the way I thought about it was the league was almost in its adolescence 
if you will, and it was growing up. So the way I thought about it is we grow the league and you need partners alongside you, community partners, corporate partners, media partners, to hold hands and grow simultaneously. And it's there's a value proposition for both sides of that. So the way I thought about it was through partnerships, that things that were good for the W, we wanted them to be good for the community. Mm and good for our media partners as well. So when people were talking about a triple bottom line, we were talking about win, win, win for every partner, making sure no one was taking advantage of anyone. It was all inextricably linked and it worked for everybody. So with SB202 going on here in Atlanta, that made me think of how the MLB couldn't marry the movement that the players so you're talking about you know making it all one thing they couldn't marry together the idea that the players want to have voices now the players are speaking up about things and then Atlanta lost the all-star game but what do you think a lot of times now it's almost you can't separate the two so what other steps like you know because even us here in Atlanta we're trying to build business and, and get that corporate sponsorship behind us because people can say till they're blue in the face we support you but are you supporting us with dollars are you supporting us with resources and so how do you get from that we support you you had the megaphone you were telling them about us but how do you convert the we support you to actual equitable dollars and to make it that win-win you're talking about yeah yeah that's a fantastic question. question renee for sure so when i look at what mlb did you know i wanted that game to stay here. We wanted them to stay and fight, okay? We didn't want MLB to leave. Let's be clear, we had economic loss. When they pull the game, everybody from the ticket takers to the Uber drivers to the restaurant, I mean, everybody was economically impacted. Yes, the crazy laws that folks are trying to pass, let's just be clear, our Republican governor and legislature, they are very short-sighted, but we know there's a whole nother agenda there. Put a pin in that because we'll come back yes. and talk about it. Okay, okay. But the corporate people, listen, when all the community stuff was happening last year in 2020, starting most notably with the George Floyd murder, Everybody was stepping out in corporate America saying, we're with you. We're with you. Yeah. We're all about uh, not just diversity and inclusion. We're saying Black Lives Matter. We we agree with you. It is one thing to say it. It is quite mm. another to act. What you say and how you behave, as a, not just as an individual, but as a corporate entity, those two things need to be aligned or you're going to run into a buzzsaw with the athletes with the community residents and with everybody. So I think the athletes have to continue to speak up and challenge, and I mean this in the most positive way, challenge these corporate leaders and corporations to have their audio match their video. And that's not just pulling something out of a city, that's standing alongside, much like I talked about the partnerships for the W in 2016, 2017, 2018, Twitter was standing alongside the W. Yeah. FanDuel was standing alongside the dub and they still stand there today. So rather than have like episodic in and out, like we wish you today, we not with you. Like, what is that? Like, right. that's not a partnership. So I think the challenges have to come even more sharply from the players and from the community, frankly. If the corporate people say that they are aligned partners, they need to demonstrate that through their behavior, period, full stop. Wow. Hearing you, hearing you say that, um, I, I can't help but think about the kind of different goals that a lot of these, uh, the groups involved in these partnerships would have. You know, MLB will have a different goal than Coca-Cola, will have a different goal than the players in the players' union, will have a different goal maybe than the owners of the teams, and that goes for the W, the NBA, whatever sports league you have. Uh, in your role, how did you manage to kind of like balance those competing goals to create incentives that, as you say, hopefully... Uh, make make it so that everybody's a winner in a given situation like how do you because you know nobody does anything out of the out of the goodness of their hearts right they can yeah. anybody can make the statement and say this is bad we're against this but how do you uh, really create the situation where uh it's a plus for them to do something more and balance that with the with the needs and goals of the other people involved in this 
Yeah, Jason, that's an interesting question. Let me push back on the premise a little bit. Sure. You said all the goals are different. No, the goals, goals are all the same. Everybody is trying to grow their business, whether it's the W, whether it's ESPN, whether it's Coca-Cola, whether it's whomever, Marriott, everybody is trying to grow their business. So Marriott's trying to book more rooms. The W is trying to sell more tickets to watch. Coca-Cola is trying to sell Coca-Cola. Let's be clear. Everybody is, the goal is the same. They are all right. yeah. business goals to <laughs> Grow the damn business, okay? <laughs> so when I was talking to corporate people, it's like, let's be clear. You want to sell Pepsi, Coke, whatever we're talking yeah. about in the arena. You want the arena full, right? Yeah. That is not dissimilar from the Renee when she was playing saying, I want this arena full so people are cheer and it's loud. Yeah. And as I'm on point and I'm threading the needle, that people get really excited about that. Renee wants butts in seats. Right. Yeah. All the players want butts in the owners want butts in seats. Coca-Cola wants butts in seats. Th those goals are all completely aligned. What the challenge has been, Jason, I think there hasn't always been belief in women's sports. There just mm. hasn't. Let's be clear. But also let's be clear about the facts. The W is 25 years old today or this season, I should say. The NBA is 75 years old. That is three generations. So they've had 50 more years or two more generations to build that fan base, to train that fan base, to demonstrate value to all the media partners. So when people compare the W and the NBA, I'm like, listen, it starts and begins, ends with basketball. We are all playing the same sport. The women, frankly, play it more collaboratively. I'm over in Renee's X's and O's now. Come but on I'm now. Just, <laughs> I'm just telling you, right? We are not just standing out on the perimeter at the three-point hash mark and shooting. We are taking the ball all around the horn and giving it to the person that has the best shot. Renee was reading the court. She figured out who that was, passed the ball, they shoot it, okay? <laughs> we have to do the same thing with our partners Who's the best partner to go around? The, who's going to build their business alongside the W? And who can take the best shot? You don't just want any partner. You want a partner who believes in the W, not just the game, the women who are playing the game and what they're trying to demonstrate. Basketball, particularly the way the women play it in the W, that's a metaphor for life. Let's just be clear. I so like that. It takes people who really understand it. Renee, you and I both know that. Yeah, no, I like that. And so we can just literally hear all of the knowledge on the business yeah. side that you just have oozing out of you. So it's no shock why Adam Silver plucked you out of where you were, extracted you to the WNBA. Can you just tell us about that story? Because <laughs> I actually heard it's a pretty cool story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Renee, that's so funny. So thank you for the question. Adam is such a cool dude. You know, that's a bad boy. I tell everybody. That's a, he's the best commissioner. He's my friend, but he's a bad boy. So he and I both graduated from Duke and we both were invited to be trustees at the university in 2015. So we came in in the same class of trustees. And that first year, I think it was the Christmas meeting. So it's like in December, right? They had all the new trustees at dinner sitting at this one. It's like being at the little kids table, right? <laughs> Except for, it, it, I, I'm just going to tell you, it was so much fun because it was the president's table, right? But the president of Duke, you're like, oh my God, this is like being in the principal's office, right? You got to <laughs> You gotta like behave, but Adam and I are sitting there and we're side by side and the president had to keep getting up, Jason, cause he's like introducing people and there's like singing and there's yeah. all this stuff. So Adam and I, Renee, were left to our own devices, right? We're like huh? sitting there like two little kids. This is our first meeting at Christmas time. And we're talking back and forth. And Adam says something to me about Coca-Cola the Coca-Cola company is where I was working. Well, 
Coke had just lost the contract with the NBA and the W and they had started with Pepsi. So he's giving me a hard time about the Coca-Cola, right? He's like talking trash. And I'm like, oh no, it's not going down like that. What the hell? Why are you talking about my company? I said, I tell you what, what are you doing with the W? Yeah, Renee, I flipped the script. It's like, this is a- I like that. This is a transition play. Watch this. So he says, what do you mean? I said, well, you don't have a president. Your attendance is in the tank. Nobody's paying attention. Your players don't look happy. What time is it at the W? He was like, no, you won't. You will not. (laughs) So so I said, okay, Adam. He starts answering questions. All of a sudden he gets kind of serious, Renee. And he Uh says, well, why do you think you know so much? I was like, because I'm the number one fan. Help bring the team to Atlanta, 2008. Yep. I believe. You got to believe in this league. You got to believe in these women. So he pulls out his business card and says, well, since you got so much to say, why don't you come and help? I'm like, <laughs> what just happened? Renee, he flipped it on me. He flipped. I was like, okay, wait a minute. So this is on a Saturday night. We leave the school. We go back to our respective cities after the meeting. Monday morning comes. I'm supposed to call him. He has told me to call him. Renee, can I tell you, I forgot. I swear oh, to God. Oh, no. <laughs> I forgot. I know Jason, you lying. I, for- I got the commissioner's card from the NBA, and I forgot to call. Wow. But let me let me tell you. I love it. <laughs> I love it. it's a power it's a power play by you. I, you make know, him, I wish I him. could say I planned it, Jason. It wasn't like that. <laughs> but here's what happened. Adam called me at eleven o'clock. I'll never forget it on that Monday morning. And I was like, oh, Adam, I'm so sorry. I forgot to call you back. And he was like, it's all good. We have a conversation. Can I tell you, Renee, that boy called me every day until I said yes, that I would come to the W. I got to say, Jason, you talk about a power move. I was like, this boy is some kind of serious. So wait, how many days did it take for him to call you? I just, I'm just curious. Like how many days until, (laughs) how many days until you said yes? I think it was four. It was like that week. (laughs) But you know what? That's actually a lot. I know I wasn't trying to play hard to get, but let me give you some context. So I'm at the Coca-Cola company and Renee, my, my maternal grandfather worked there from 1929 to 1959 as a chauffeur for one of the first presidents of the Coca-Cola company. My grandmother, his wife worked there for 15 years as a maid. So our family had 45 years of service to the Coca-Cola company. And those jobs enabled my maternal grandparents to send my mother and her sister to college. They were first generation college graduates because of the Coca-Cola company. Now, I, at this time, had the privilege of being the chair of the Global Foundation. So we had moved from the chauffeur seat to the executive suite in two generations. Woo! Come on now, say that again. We moved from where? From the chauffeur seat to the executive suite in Ooh, two generations. Okay, right? okay. yes. <laughs> so what, what I felt was a little bit of heartburn leaving the Coca-Cola mm. company because yeah. it had been so good to my family. Yeah. And let's face it, I had a fantastic, fantastic job. But what I saw in the W was an opportunity to be even more impactful, Renee, with women primarily black women, let's be clear, 75 to 80% mm-hmm. of the women are brown, black and brown women. So I'm thinking we're doing fantastic work here at the Coca-Cola company, all good. But here's where I can get like my hands in everything, right? And really get to spend time with these women, listen to them, understand what their goals are, take the league to a whole nother level. And let me just be clear, Adam Silva is one hell of a salesman, okay? (laughs) (laughs) I'm not surprised. I am not surprised. That's crazy. So just quick question. Would you want to get back in that sports world? It sounds like, you know, like sports is a a different beast. Once you've tasted it, you always want to kind of come back to it. So do you want to ever come back to sports in any type of role? I mean, just do you have an affinity for sports and being around it? Short answer, yes. I love it. To your point, when you just 
put your toe in the water. Like yeah. the water feels yeah. good. You're like, oh, I need yeah. to swim in this. I need to get neck deep in this. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I've had the pl- the privilege of doing a little bit of work for the Olympic Committee. Okay. So, but, oh. and of course, you know, the, the W is the source of the talent for the yeah. men and the women for the Olympic teams. So having experienced it at the professional level, a little bit of the Olympics, and they're, come on, I graduated from Duke. Like, we know how to spell yeah. basketball. We know how to play sports. We know how to Shouts win to championships. Kara. Shouts to Kara yeah. Lawson. That's y'all's right. coach over there at Duke. Shouts to K-Law. I played with her a lot of years, so that's the homie. So Oh, yeah. she's a bad girl. She's a bad girl. Amen to that. So the short answer, Renee, is yes. I love sports. What I recognize is it's one of two international languages. You don't have to speak a word of any language to appreciate a sport or appreciate a sporting event. The other one is music. So between music and sports, it doesn't get any better than that. So if someone said to me, we have a magical opportunity, Renee, I have to say, tell me what you got. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Uh, I love it. Finally, uh, you have a podcast called Enlightened. Tell us about that podcast. Yeah, Jason, thank you for the question. So Enlightened is really about insights that people gain after they go through an experience. Oftentimes that is adversity because we often learn more from tough times than we do from celebrations. Typically when we achieve something great, we're like jumping up and down and doing a Snoopy dance. Renee can tell you when she won her W championships, yeah. they were like popping corks in Turned the- up. <laughs> way up. But you remember the party. <laughs> But when you go through something that is painful, it becomes oftentimes purposeful because it teaches you something if you're willing to stop and take a breath and learn from it. So what I am finding, Jason, in talking to friends, family, folks that I admire up close and from afar, is that every one of us has got a story and everybody's got some adversity that they've overcome. Sometimes they've taken it for granted. Other times, in the case of athletes, Renee, you know if it's a torn ACL or it's something big where you had to have a surgery and you had to rehab, you do not forget that. Okay, you absolutely do not forget that. And you figure out so many lessons along the way. So we are trying to share those, Jason, with folks. Take an opportunity to download the universe and say, I went through this, this is what I learned. Whatever you're facing, you too can overcome that. Use these lessons or lessons from some of our other guests and let's make it to the other side and be your best, your best self when you come Ooh. on the other side. Be wow. your best self. Look, what I take, <laughs> I love it. what enlightened me from this conversation is chauffeur seat to executive suite. <laughs> I'm sorry. I loved everything about that. <laughs> Lisa Borders, it was a pleasure having you on Take Line. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to be here. Love you guys. Thank you so much.